Recently, I got talking with some people about the subject of marriage, and a few things came up in the course of our discussion that I thought could be a subject of uh, a video to share with us. Um, we got talking, and uh, these young people, a lot of them were married. They, they expressed their concern about the subject of marriage, and the first thing I'd like to say to you is that Marriage is not a very easy thing. That is the truth. Jesus spoke to his disciples about marriage and they say, if the case of a man be so, then it's better not to marry. So marriage is not something very... And you don't expect it to be so. We're talking together about two adults, different backgrounds, different orientations and all of that, coming together to form a home. There have to be things they've learned before they need to unlearn. There are things they've learned before they need to trash, they need to forget them because it's not just going to work. So marriage is not very easy. However, one of the very important things that I consider is genuine interest. If you're interested in making your home work, it doesn't mean that it will work. It just means that it stands a better chance of working. Many people go into marriage with a mindset that, well, worst case, we, we end up in divorce. If you go into marriage with that mindset, it will always break. Always. So go into it with the mind that you're going to give it your best. You're going to do everything you've got to keep your home. Now, of course, I realize that there are extenuating circumstances which bring threat to life and all of that where, you know, it becomes a little bit challenging to maintain that commitment. But we're saying that by and large, before these things happen, let your mind be that you're going to go into it and make it work. I think that is very important. Number two thing that I think apart from... Uh, apart from commitment, is that we have to realize some of the major issues that arise in, in, in marriages. And there are so many of them, but I think three are very, very important. Money, sex, and external influences. I think that so many times we trivialize the place of money. And of course, money alone does not fix a marriage. If money alone does it, uh, maybe uh, people like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates will not have issues because they have the money. It doesn't fix it. However, it plays a major role in you know, bringing peace to a home. I've seen cases where the problem there is because the man can no longer provide for the house. Or maybe he's, he's never even been there, never provided for it. And the Bible supports the position that provision should be made available. It says that if a man does not provide for his own home, he's worse than an infidel. But there are situations where the man loses his job, you know, bad things happen to him, and the woman has to be the breadwinner at least for some time. Now, the woman must be able to realize that at that moment, you are fulfilling your part in making the homework. You do not necessarily have to start castigating your husband because, after all, he's been doing it all this while. If we have that kind of harmony, it's, it's going to make the home work a lot. And for a man, you need to realize that your financial responsibility is toward your home. The home is very important. A lot of us don't put priority on this. And I think that it's something we need to rearrange. Our homes are important. Our, the major part of our money must go there. We must ensure that we take care of our wives, we take care of our children. That is the commitment you should have. If you begin to have that, you'll see that a lot of your wastages will reduce. And you'll see that bond and coming into the family. Because money does play, play a major role. Sex is another. And you see, a lot of women say that my man is, uh, is always demanding for too much sex and all of that. And the question would be, what exactly is too much? At what point do you know, do you say it's too much? And in my opinion, I do not think there is a hard and fast rule or a one fit it all answer to that. I think it's something that you guys need to sit down together as a couple and talk about the needs of each other. Because at the end of the day, it's about compromises, about sacrifices, it's about meeting the needs of each other.
In fact, sex, denial, and lack of satisfaction is one reason many people have extramarital affairs. So you, you are in the office there and there's a lady that is willing to you have you know you every time and the wife at home is always tired until you get tired yourself. And then you go around and before you realize it, you're having an extramarital affair that probably wasn't planned for. So Sex is a very important thing that I think a lot of couples shy away from. We don't want to talk about it. Maybe because of cultural stigma or context. Maybe because of uh, spiritual inclination of whatever Christian background you belong to. No. If the home is going to be successful, we've got to talk about it. And in some cases, I advocate that people that have problems with their libido and there are some form of incompatibility, particularly those that are medically inclined, should visit a doctor, visit a specialist. Now, it's, let's be frank, I'm a pastor, but pastors are not trained to be all things to all men. We're not Jesus. So there are things that a pastor cannot just fix. Sometimes you need to visit a therapist, you need to visit some professionals. And even among pastors, there are those that are specialists at marriage counseling. Not every pastor can be a successful marriage counselor. You need to be able to seek help when you do need it. And when you need to seek medical attention, please go ahead and do that. Today, with the advancement in, uh, in technology, in discovery, in medical sciences, there are quite some medications that could be given that could enhance, you know, uh, libidos, particularly when there is a low one on any of the two people. This will greatly reduce the, 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 the issue of uh, unfaithfulness and immorality that we have among married people today. Now, but maybe we should also talk about sexual appeal here. So one, it's, it's the sex itself. Maybe the other one is the sexual appeal. There are people, particularly now I'm talking to wives majorly, or, or, or women, people preparing for to, to get into marriage. Sometimes people get into homes into marriages, they become wives, they become mothers, and all of a sudden they think that it doesn't matter again how they look. After all, I now have a husband, he's a man of God, he's a believer, he will not cheat on me and all of that. And yeah, many men may not have set out to cheat, but when you no longer have that sex appeal, when you now appear loser and careless when you don't take care of how you smell, you don't take care of your air, you don't take care of your of your looks. Now is this people outside who kind of move is chemistry versus you at home, you know, where nothing changes when it sights you. You need to change your game. You need to up the ante. That will keep your own. If you don't do that, it doesn't matter the amount of prayer you are praying. Even a prostitute will penetrate. Trust me. Why? Because you're not obeying basic laws. A man, you know, wants to see something. What he sees appeals to him. So you need to ensure that you are looking always appealing. Once in a while, let him be able to ask you, are you going out? Why are you dressing this way? I mean, and all of that. So up your ante, and I'm sure there are a lot of materials you can, uh, you can get along those lines. And of course, external influences. Uh, trust me, this one is very important. I see a lot of guys that are married, but they are still tied to their mother's apron. Every single thing that happens at home, mommy must hear about it. That's a boy, you're not a man. If you're like that. A man must be able to take charge of his home. A man must be a man. The same thing with a woman. It's not everything that happens in your house you share with your sisters or with your mother. If you do that, you're rubbishing yourself. The day the man gets to know, he loses confidence in you. You don't rubbish your husband in the presence of your family. It's the same thing with a man. You don't disregard and you know, demean your wife. Particularly, don't do that at all, but particularly in the presence of your family members because it will just affect that. And so you people should be talking to one another. Communication, it will reduce a lot of friction. And here it's important for me to tell you that even those of us that are your pastors, 
We are third parties in your marriages. So don't bring everything to me if I'm your pastor or you look up to me until you have discussed with your spouse. It's only if after you have explored all those communication and talks and all of that and you still cannot fix it that you can get, you can seek help. Let me say that to you again. Even those of us that are your pastors, we are third parties. We are external parties in your home. I see a lot of homes that have been ruined by pastors, by, 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 by spiritual people, by bishops, apostles, prophets, you know, in the, in the name of counseling. People should talk first. You can resolve a lot of things by talking to yourself. I think this is very important. The last thing I want to say is this. I go back again to where I started from, commitment. Men do everything to keep your home. Do everything to protect your home. Women do exactly the same thing. Protect your home. Let's fight for the territory of our homes. Our children will thank us later. They will appreciate the fact that we sacrificed, that we did everything to keep the integrity of that family. I see you succeeding in your home. Hallelujah. Amen.